This is my video walkthrough for my course that I created for ADP 447. Um, I built my course in Cascade, and so we're looking at it in the student view, which is how my students will see it. Um, the subject matter for this lesson is finding and editing images. The intended audience for the lesson is faculty, staff, and students at my university who have been designated as web editors for their office or department. Um, and so we're going to work through this module of finding and editing images for the Cascade server. The time frame to complete the course would be um, between one and two hours. Students can work at, on it um, on their own pace. And they can also come back to the course after they finished if they want to do any kind of review. The only technology requirements would be a computer and internet access. And for these courses, you would also be required to be a faculty, staff, or student at Miami. The learning objectives for this course are listed on the overview. Um, so students have to create an account and download images from Photo Shelter. Determine the appropriate size for the image using the size reference page in Cascade Instructions. Use to learn Pixlr, which is a free um, online web-based software where they can crop and resize their images and then save the image using the correct naming conventions for Cascade. The instructional design model that I followed was the guided experiential learning and that includes listing the goals, reasons, and overview for the course defining the learning objectives. Um, the activities which will um, give them the conceptual knowledge. And so it'll be a discussion of the types of images that we use and the proper cropping and resize planning. Demonstration is a component for the guided experiential learning. And so there are um, online instructions with screenshots and then also video tutorial. They'll get to practice what they've seen, and then their, comp their assessment will also um, be competency-based, which means they'll have to um, edit and submit three images for review by the UCM trainer. They don't really have to have any kind of um, prerequisite skills or knowledge other than just um, some basic computer skills. And so what students will actually do, um, if they open up the overview, they can get to the module components by just clicking on the activities. And this will take them to the first component. And so in Photo Shelter, I've created a tabs um, so students can look at the instructions based on if they're a first time user or if they're a returning user. The home button will always take them um, back to the main home page. And so then they can find their, the module there. And so here I've laid it out. Um, the activities are step by step, everything that they'll need to know. They have a practice assignment. There's a discussion forum where they can post their images or they can ask any questions or relate any problems. And then um, either I or other students can get back to them. And then the assessment is also listed in this module. Um, the other way to get back to the module homepage is if they just click on the modules. It'll take it to all of them, and then you can see the finding and editing images is right here. Um, the taxonomy that I used um, followed um, Bloom's taxonomy. So the remembering portion, students will be given written instructions and view videos in order to learn the processes in the best image use practices um, used in RCMS, they'll be able to recall how to navigate Photo Shelter and Pixlr. For understanding, they will construct meaning um, from the different types of ways that images are used in RCMS. Um, applying, after practicing, students will be able to carry out the procedure by finding, downloading, and editing images. In analyzing, they'll be able to construct various um, parts of their web pages. Um, by using the images that they um, download and, and edit and after learning how all the components relate to each other. Um, evaluating, they'll be able to review their images, making judgments based on criteria and standards which are given through the rubrics and the learning objectives. 
through checking and critiquing. Um, and then creating as an experienced image editor, students will be able to create new correctly sized and named images for use on their website in various places for various purposes. And then the Bloom taxonomy will also apply to the overall lessons that I'm teaching um, in this whole uh, unit. So for the assessments, Um, the formative assessments will be based on students' practice activity, so they'll get to do one image and um, see that they've been able to complete all the objectives. They can post it to the discussion forum if they have questions about it or just want it to be checked. And then the summative assessment will be their final project, which they'll do three different types of images. Um, and so they'll learn what these different types of um, image types are when they review the size reference chart and then also um, based on how their images are going to be used they can pick an image that would make sense to be on that page from photo shelter the assessments are directly aligned with the learning objective so for each learning objective I've just listed um, that same thing on the rubric and then this is also what is being taught in the instruction so all of those things align together um, and then the specific type of assessment that I'm using is um, competency-based. So they'll actually be doing activity to show their learning. For future improvements to this lesson, I plan on creating a demonstration video for Photo Shelter and not just the um, online notes with screenshots. And then I'm going to purchase the full version of Zaption so that I can embed quick reference questions and notes directly into the videos. I've done some with the practice. Um, or the trial form of Zaption. It doesn't have a lot of, um, of the options, so I can do more if I get the full version. And then um, in the long term, I'm going to add the other modules to this course so that a user can complete all of the Cascade training online. I also think that this layout would work for other teachers if they wanted to modify it. Um, it could be improved or changed if they were going to teach other kind of web-based training or even anything that has just specific text if it's technology or specific steps if it's technology related. And so for this course, you know, for my module, everything is under the finding and editing images for Cascade Server. I listed all of the steps, including the overview that has the objectives all of the activities um, and practice for assessment, a discussion forum where they can get feedback, and then the final assessment. And then once they complete that, then they'll um, be able to move on to the next step of um, doing Cascade Basic Training and then working on their web pages. Thanks.